It's windy. Yeah, uh, okay. <coughs> <laughs> That's the cold wind. Hey guys, welcome to... Thank you, Scarlett. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Danny Cruz and I am known as Pinch Tune in the FPB community. I have tried... I have tried many different FPV motors throughout the years since I started back in 2014. Motors by T-Motor, X-Nova, Broader Hobby, Hyperlite, Cobra, the list goes on. Uh, and I have mainly been flying T-Motor because of personal choice as I feel they make some amazing motors. And when a manufacturer like T-Motor realizes there are people in the industry or companies in the industry that started with kind of like entry level motors and then started getting more experience. So they started launching higher end motors. A company like T-Motor goes like, you know what? We know how to make a good motor. Let's go ahead and change things up and make some more affordable motors to meet the now very popular class of economical motors or mid-range motors. That doesn't mean you have to compromise. So in comes the Pacer motor by T-Motor. This is one of various motors they launch in sort of the mid-range to economy range, including like the Velox or Velo X motor, Pacer, and they have a bunch of different versions, colors, and KVs of all these motors. Let's go ahead and open this guy up and take a look. I was very interested to try this motor out because even though I fly F40 Pros, you might have noticed that my favorite motor is the F40 Pro 2 2150 and the reason is simple. I pay for my own stuff so sometimes I'm a little bit hesitant. Sometimes I'm a Sometimes I'm a little bit hesitant about paying $26 or $27 for a motor, even though I know they're amazing. So I tend to look at the older lines like the Pro 2 and Pro 3 when I can. So a motor like this is very appealing to me because it should give me T-motor quality with a lower price tag. And you know what? For freestyle, that's important, but I'm kind of like... Uh, very conservative conservative with my freestyle so my stuff tends to last longer I don't tend to take the risks that some guys do sometimes and uh, a motor like this for me is very interesting when I'm gonna fly concrete or when I'm gonna fly for racing because I tend to mess stuff up a lot more often than I do for regular freestyle now again this is not the cheapest motor this is kind of a mid-range $20 motor I believe it lists for $19.99 correct me if I'm wrong otherwise I will put it in the description but as you can see it's a very very good looking motor one of the best motors in this price range as far as looks go it's got this two-tone orange and gray dang I am trembling from the cold um, uh, machining very nice there so we'll take a closer look at it and put on the scale and whatnot. The wiring I noticed is kind of interesting because it feels thinner for some reason. But it's um, let me see. Uh, actually, it doesn't say the gauge on it, but eh, it feels like 20 gauge. So I think it's just normal stuff. It's a little bit lighter, not full black. It's almost like a dark charcoal black on it. See, one thing that T Motor did with these lines of motors is that they gave the people what they wanted. You see, for example, the very popular Pro line of motors has multi-strand wiring. They have a very good coating that's very hard to burn and it works just fine. They tend to run a little bit hotter because of the multi-strand, but they don't burn because the coating is actually very good. But people have been saying, you know what, why don't you give us a single strand thick wiring motor and that's what this is. So this new lineup uses single strand, which by the way, it's actually very clean the way it's laid out and definitely looks cleaner than their pro line because multi-strand wiring even though it's great it doesn't look as clean you, you just cannot wind it to look pretty like these so this is a uh, this is very nice okay so this motor is meant for 6s this is a 2207.5 which is a very popular size right now and this is 1950 kv and that's important because when 6s really became popular originally it was 1750 kb because it was more or less a direct comparison between 4s and 6s 
But now I've seen a drop in popularity in 1750 KB over the last year, year and a half. And the reason being is a lot of pilots have been realizing that they want more punch and that the 6S batteries can handle it. So that's when 1850 KB, 1950 KB became more popular. And additionally, because uh, the firmware now, both from Flight One, KISS, and uh, Beta Flight, has been developed to the point where the throttle caps, throttle limits on them, work really well. And for that reason, a lot of pilots are realizing, you know what, I'd rather err on the side of higher KV that I need and put a cap on it than go too low because too low, there's nothing you can do. Once you're on 6S, what are you going to do? 07, 8S? No. You know, so at that point, it's actually better to err on the side of slightly higher KV than lower KV and just put a throttle cap on it if you need it. What we're going to do here is going to put it on the scale with wiring and without wiring to check the weight. I'm going to go ahead and coil this guy up around here so the wires stay in place. That should do it. And put it on there. Let me reset this. Okay, boom. And with wiring, the motor is 37 grams, which sounds a little high. But let's go ahead and I'm actually going to cut the wires because I'm going to put this on a quad that has race wire. I'm going to cut them a little bit long just to get these off. I know I can do this a different way, but I know I'm going to cut them anyway, so what? whatever. So with short wires, it is 34.6 grams. So weight is a little bit up there, slightly higher than what I expected. It's still competitive. The size is 2207.5, so it's still a big motor. Um, and I believe it has a lot to do with the fact that um, the shaft looks like stainless steel, not titanium, and I know that adds weight. Um, still, I'm not going to mention other companies, but it is still competitive compared to other motors in this same price range, so keep that in mind as well. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to open it up. I know I normally don't do this, but I want to take this a step further. Oh no, I don't want to lose the screw. Okay, I noticed there is no Loctite in the screws. So you might want to add some of you. Even though I never really have motors pop out ever, even without Loctite, it would be nice to add some. Let's go ahead and carefully without scratching it. Okay. So taking a look at the bell inside. Ah, look at that. We have a silicone little green ring there under that um, washer, that spacer. I'm not going to tell you where that comes from, but it is a very good idea. The magnets look great. There's a little bit of balancing mud right there, but overall it looks really good. And another key feature you got to see here, see as these guys try it up each other out as far as who makes the best motor they keep adding great features I never really had magnets slip on T motors but hey if you can make them better make them better even if you didn't have a problem look at that it, there's a little bit of a lip right there over the magnets to make sure they don't slip out this is something that really should be done on most motor and a lot of manufacturers simply don't bother but it's nice to see that lip there that helps hold the magnets in place that way, if you knock them, they don't come out. But yeah, there is a little uh, sort of um, shock absorber thing there. They're really good looking bells, I gotta say. And that ring and this sort of build likely adds up to the weight, but it also tells me it's a very strong motor. And you know what? I am highly considering this as a, my main race motor, even though I'm gonna put it on a freestyle rig, simply because I can already tell this is gonna be very strong. It's gonna take a beating. Looking at the stator, there you have it. This, that number there, by the way, that's the batch number. So when you see a one, two, three, it tells you what batch number is for this line of motor. Uh, there is some glue in there to help keep the wires in place and avoid them getting pulled out. There is no retainer on this end which is kind of typical of these uh, T-motors, but I really never yank them out anyway, but the, that glue inside is gonna really, really help. I like the unique shape of the bell too, I mean of the base. It's, uh, it's different, and I like that it's very small too.
Okay, I'm obviously recording this part of the review before I actually fly the motor. At the end of the video, we'll have flight footage and I'll probably have a conclusion about it. I am gonna put this on a freestyle rig, which I'll tell you about now. And the reason is because that's what I have built and I wanna get this review going, which is, this is obviously gonna be a great freestyle motor. I think it's gonna be an amazing racing motor too. Uh, the, the KV being higher, the size, which is very similar to the power, you know, like big block motors that the fast racers run these days, even though I'm not a fast racer. Uh, it, and the fact that it looks like it's gonna be very, very durable, the way it's built, the shaft, the retainers for the magnets, the whole thing really does look like it's gonna be a very durable motor. And yeah, when you think of durability, you think let's fl flying bandos, flying concrete, but racing is one of the big deals because braking motors racing is also very common. And at a price point like this, it's something you can definitely absorb instead of paying $27 for a motor to beat it up racing, unless you can afford it, of course. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy together. Put this screw back in there. I'll add um, Loctite later when I remember to do it. I just wanna get it put together so I don't lose anything here. There we go. Okay, that's pretty tight, that's good. I do wanna say something about the packaging. The packaging is smaller, it comes in these cardboard boxes and it has this white foam inside. Uh, it, this is something that I, you know, it's better to use paper than plastic in terms of packaging, but ho however, I do miss the T-Motor tubs because I use them for a lot of stuff for storing screws and whatnot after uh, the fact. And I here we have the bag. I see that they included some rather longer screws than one typically comes with these motors. And I think the manufacturers are realizing that people are using thicker arms these days. And it comes with a set of actually shorter screws and also some longer screws as well. And then another retainer screw, a shim, which is also for the underside, and uh, the prop nut right there. Okay, so let's move over here. This is where this motor is gonna go on as a test bed. I am actually asking T-Motor today if I can show you these motors or not. These motors are the original prototypes from back in October or September 2019 that were sent to me for testing when these motors were being developed. And from these motors, we got the Pacers, we got the Velo X. Uh, this was an early prototype, so it didn't actually evolve into a single specific model. Uh, I believe these are Actually, when you look at it, they're very, very similar in terms of the, the design. So it's almost like this is where these came from. The bell is, of course, different. Uh, if you're seeing this, it's because T-Motor allowed me to show them to you. Otherwise, you won't be seeing this. And the big thing that I forgot to mention in this whole thing is the fact that this is a unibell. There is no seam. And like I said, these guys are all competing trying to make the best motor at the best price, and then you end up with things like this. This Unibel system is the best thing because it just removes the problem of having the bell pop off the ring, which is so common on most motors that have a separate ring and top. And I'm glad I'm seeing this, and I think this is gonna be the standard moving forward as it'll make a much stronger bell.
Good morning, it is a new day and today I'm gonna do the flight footage of the T-Motor Pacer 2207.5 1950KV. I didn't wanna do this here because I'm honestly kind of fed up of flying the same spot all the time, but the weather's been bad and I'm gonna try and do this now to get some flight footage. A couple of things I wanna point out. First, it is windy. Second, I am running a Hero 7 instead of my usual Session 5. Now, I normally fly a Session 5 90% of the time. The 7, sometimes, but Hyper Smooth is off. Again, no stabilization. I normally never fly Hyper Smooth. This is a Hero 7, and I sometimes fly a Hero 6, and I, yes, I'll use Hyper Smooth in certain situations, and I will use uh, Real Steady in certain situations, but it's mostly when I'm going for a specific cinematic shot that I can't miss, that I need to get, it's windy, It's it has to be done, right? But when I'm flying freestyle, normally I'm flying a Session 5, so there's no faking it there. But when I'm flying the Hero 7, just about 95% of the time, Hyper Smooth is off. And I wouldn't feel right giving you a motor review with Hyper Smooth on. So again, there's going to be no stabilization. It's going to be straight up from the camera, a little windy, yes it is, but it's fine. A couple other things as well. These motors are very powerful, so... I actually had to dial them down a little bit to, I think I'm, I'm right now 90% throttle limit on Falco X from Fight One. With the camera on here, I'll feel the weight now. Maybe I'll bump it up to 91, but I think it should be okay. Uh, you know what? These are 1950 KV. That's what I decided to order. I could have gone 1750, but I believe that it's better to be able to dial them down a little bit than find yourself without enough power. So I think still this is the better option. I think I would, have been, I would have been perfectly fine with 1750 KV for freestyle. Maybe some of you racers that are way faster would definitely prefer the, the higher KV regardless. But I think most of you guys are going to be super happy with 1950. In fact, I would, well, 1750, I would as well simply because it's enough power. So let's go ahead and do the flight and see what we've got. All right, up we go. Let's see. The T-Motor Pacer 2207.5 1950 KV with a 10% throttle cut. That's 90% throttle, which equates to about 1750. Here we go. This is the way I recommend you run them anyway. That because it's better to have more power than than you need than not enough, and then you can always put a throttle cap on it. Engine on. Okay, I'm flying Flight One Falco X, one of the latest alphas. Here we go. Um, Tune is pretty good. Yeah, there's no question this uh, feels like a race motor, but you can definitely freestyle with it very well. And the thing is, you can catch the thing from dies really incredibly well. And I'm, I'm carrying a Hero 7, again, Hyper Smooth is off, no stabilization whatsoever. So any little movements and stuff, you're going to see them, no problem. Um, but I normally fly a Session 5, so when I'm carrying this much weight with my usual F40 motor, oh no, with my usual F40 motor, I, um, I feel that weight of the camera and, and I don't like it, but with this, uh, with this much power now, see how that just catch it on the way down. Not you're not gonna hit the ground, and it's cold, so my batteries are not as efficient as they could be. They just uh, don't like it when it's just cold. It's like I want to say 35 degrees now Fahrenheit, but yeah, look at that. It's uh, pretty frenetic. It's like. And I'm only flying at about 50% throttle. Like, I'm actually gonna do a punch out here. All right, my bad, I did not like that. I could definitely see a bigger punch on a fresh battery. I should have done that at the beginning. But the amount of control, like fine control on the sticks, you feel everything in this motor. It's so, so responsive, it's crazy. Obviously, Bardwell isn't the only guy to use a character of himself in the future during his videos. Uh, here's the problem. I did the flight footage yesterday at home in the snow and then another one today at the park. And the thing is, I can't call myself Pinch Tune if I don't have a perfect tune. Unfortunately, 
the tune on the quad isn't there yet. I, after flying and looking at the footage, I was noticing slight oscillations in certain situations and more prop watch that I'd like to see, but I feel I need to release this video. So what I'm gonna do, as I'm gonna release this photo so you can see it and then, but then make sure to check the description because very soon I'll have better footage of these motors on a properly tuned quad. So make sure to check that out very soon. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically just narrate what I feel because I think the tune will be better than what I was flying. So we'll see. And up here. I hear a little bit of flutters. I might have gone up on the a little bit too much. But it's feeling good though. I was just flying in here with the DJI and I can't see Japanese. So. So this is a test of bed props. Can you hear it? Yes. Wait, let me go for a second. Let me see. See how my props do. Come on, guy. this guy. But we're gonna go right back up with it regardless. All right, that props it is. Let's see if it holds up. You hear the, the deflutter because of the bed props? Yes. I'm gonna find out if they, the motors handle the, the heat that this is gonna generate. I know my battery is not like it. I don't want to burn them because I actually do like the motors. But you know what? The uh... <laughs> they're fine. <laughs> they're absolutely fine. And look at the props; they're all bent up. This is not horrible, but when you tune a quad really, really high, where you're like at the limits of the tune, it, they start getting really hot if you end up with this, especially with high D like this. But yeah, I, I, you know what? I, I really do like these motors. I, I gotta say. It sucks going from DJI to this and then trying to fly in there because you can't see anything, you gotta readjust, but it'll do just fine. All right, hopefully that gives you a little bit more in depth on these motors. Again, these are the T-Motor Pacer 2205.5, 1950 kV. I put an 80% throttle on it, so they should be around 1720 kV on 6S. That's what I would basically say, rough math. If not, I'll put it on the screen. Thanks for watching, guys. Later. All right guys, so that was the flight performance freestyle of the motor, in my hands at least. I know this is gonna be a very good race motor, so I suggest you try them out for that. I'm actually gonna move them out of this guy into a racer for the same reason. I really wanna see how they do. Uh, regardless, it's a very good price point, has the T-Motor experience behind it. A lot of time went into developing them. It is a good looking motor. It has the Unibel, it has the retainer for the magnets. I think it's designed to be very strong and very durable. So I suggest you definitely check them out. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around for this. Uh, thumbs up to this video, share it, and subscribe to my channel as well. And yeah, I'll see you in the next review. 
Right, one last thing I want to point out. This motor came from Pyro Drone, which, you know what? They need no introduction. You guys know Serge. You know what great of a shop he runs. Derek over there, thank you so much. Again, I have no problem mentioning my four favorite shops because I like to spread my love. Between all four, when I place orders, that is Pyro Drone, Heli Nation, love you guys, Numi Drone, and Get FPV. Thanks, guys.